So we need to get some sound effects in our game now. Right now we have the main mechanics and the animation set up, but now we need to get some sound effects because our game sounds kind of boring because there's nothing there. When the bird hits the pipe, it just hits the pipe and falls. Nothing happens. When the bird flaps its wings, nothing happens. He just moves up a little bit. There's no sound effects for that. In the file we downloaded in the first episode, there are two folders in it. We have audio and sprites. We're going to look at the audio folder because this has all the audio we're going to need for the game. Now you may notice that there are two files of each in this folder. Each of these files, for example, wing and wing, they're both used for the bird's flapping animation, but they both, they each sound a little different from each other, so they're like, they're different alterations of the exact same sound effect, so this one may sound a little higher pitched than that one. You can listen to them, see which one you like better. I'm just going to use this one for now, and I'm going to drag this into my assets. You can make it so they, like, randomize which one is going to play, but for simplicity and this tutorial, I'm just going to use this one. Now, it's in our assets, you can click on it, and you can actually listen to how it'll sound by hitting this play button. But now we need to get this audio file playing whenever we click. So I'm going to head to the flow graph, and I'm going to click on bird. So we're going to need to get our bird outputting audio. We can do that by, in the bird, we need to add a new component, and it's going to be this audio source component. So we can click on that. Now this audio source component is exactly what it sounds like. It's It creates an audio source of a specific audio file. So let's say I slide this wing sound effect into the bird's clip, because if you notice there's an audio clip variable here. If I slide that in there, it will play the wing sound effect. And there's a bunch of things here. For example, I can make the sound loop, so every time it ends, it'll just start up again. There's play on awake, which means the sound will immediately play as soon as the game starts. And then a bunch of other things like volume, uh, spatial blend, which basically means if it's 2D or zero, that means no matter where you are in the game, you'll always hear it. If it's slid all the way to 3D, the farther away the main camera is from this audio source, the quieter it'll get. I'm going to keep that on 2D. Now we're going to need to get this source playing whenever we click on the mouse. Now we can disable play on awake because we don't want anything to play as soon as the project starts and we're not actually going to be dragging this sound file into here. The reason being is because there are multiple audio files we're actually going to want to play. For example, we want the wing sound effect, but we also want to play the, the death sound whenever he hits the pipe. So instead, we're going to create a variable. I'm going to call this variable wing, and I'm going to add it. You can look up audio clip and choose this audio clip type, and you can slide the wing right into there. So now we have this sound effect stored in our audio clip variable. This is the, this variable we can call to whenever we want to play the sound effect. So if we want it to play on click, we can go in our flow graph here, and whenever we set velocity, we can play the audio clip that's in this variable. So the block that we're actually going to want to find is a block called play one shot. And here are, there's two components, audio source play one shot, and pretty much the exact same thing. The difference is there's volume scale on the second one, which basically means how loud it's going to be. So we can use that one if you want to adjust the volume manually, so we can click on it. And what this basically does is it plays an audio clip once. So where it says clip, this is where we're going to want to be dragging in our variable because it is storing our wing clip, our wing sound effect. So we can go to variables, object, and then get wing. I can set the volume scale to one just to max it out. We can adjust it later if we want. So now if I click, you can see it is playing the sound effect, but you may have noticed that it didn't actually play the sound effect the first time. Like when I clicked it, the bird jumped a little bit, but he didn't play the sound effect. That's just because the first, the very first initial click is based off of this line of code down here and not this one up here. So we can actually just copy this with control C and then control V paste it. And then we can just drag the flow into there. So now it'll play the sound effect on the first clip and every other clip after that. 
So now that we have that working, we need to get to work on our pipe sounds, because whenever the bird hits a pipe, it has a smack sound, and then the bird falls down. So we can open up our sound files, and we're going to want this hit sound, which is the sound when the bird hits the pipe. So I'm going to use the bottom one. We can listen to it. And we're going to want to play this sound effect in this line of code. This piece of code is our logic that handles its collision with the pipe. You can check the tag of whatever it hits, and if it's pipe, it'll go through all this other stuff to make sure that the game over plays. So we're going to want to play our clip here. We can do a very similar thing that we did with the wing sound, where we add a variable. I'll call this one hit, look up audio clip, and you can add it, and then just drag the hit into there. And then we can do a very similar thing we did here. In fact, we can actually copy and paste this code and just attach it over here because it's pretty much the exact same thing. The only thing we're going to change is right here where it says wing. We can hit the drop down and then use hit. So now whenever the bird hits the pipe, it'll play that sound. You may have noticed in that clip that the bird's hit sound played multiple times. This is because it's entering and exiting the pipe's collider multiple times. And there's not much we can do to prevent the bird from entering and exiting the pipe's collider multiple times. But what we can do is we can check if the bird is alive and then playing the clip. In our collider code that checks if we've hit a pipe, we have an is alive variable. And this variable checks if the bird is alive or dead and then lets the bird fly. Basically, if this variable is true, the bird flies. If it's not, we can no longer let the bird fly. We can use this to prevent our hit sound from playing multiple times over. So I'm going to highlight all of this, drag it out. I'm going to disconnect this, and we're going to feed this branch block into another branch block. And this branch block will check our is alive variable. So I'm going to drag the purple node out, scroll down the variables, object, and we're gonna click get is alive. So basically if this returns true, and it should because the bird is in fact alive when we're playing the game, we can connect these up. So now what it will do is it will set is alive to false and then proceed to trigger the game over and the hit sound. And this won't run ever again because is alive is no longer true. It is now false and nothing is connected to the false. So now if I play it, it should work properly. Now there's actually one more sound effect that contributes to the game over, and it's this little falling sound. There's a cartoony falling whistling noise that he makes when he falls, which is this die sound effect. So I'm going to grab the bottom one and drag it in. We can listen to it to see how it sounds, and we can plug that into the code the exact same way we're doing everything else. Now let's say you don't want to create variables. I would recommend creating variables if you're doing this in C Sharp. I'm going to show you another way how to do it with the flow graph without creating tons and tons of variables, just in case you think this doesn't look clean. If you ever do use C Sharp to make a game like this, I would recommend making variables to hold all of the sound effects, but we're just going to, we're going to do this next one without creating a variable just to show you an, an alternate way. So we're going to grab another play one shot block. We can do the same one we did earlier with the volume scale. We can set the volume scale to 1, and where it says clip, we can actually drag the die in here. And that's a very similar thing to creating, to doing what we did here without doing another step. So if you want to do it this way, you can, um, but I would recommend doing this primarily if you choose to ever go to C Sharp and program in there. I would recommend creating variables, but in the flow graph, you can actually drag your audio clips right into this clip block. So now if I play, you should kind of see how this will all play out. So we have our death sound and we have our wing sound. Now we need to get our point sound because whenever you cross through a pipe in Flappy Bird, you get a point and a sound effect plays. That sound effect is this point sound here. So we can use one of these. So I'll drag this in. We can listen to it. So in order to change our score, we're going to need to go to our pipe prefab down here. This is because our pipe prefab has our pipe point game object. And remember, this game object has a trigger here. So whenever the bird passes through it, it'll count a point. So let's go to the flow graph. 
and how the code works, remember we have a trigger enter 2D, which detects if the birds pass through it, and then it runs this increase score argument, which this increase score argument corresponds to our score UI element, which is the, the text at the top of the screen that gives you your score. So all that does is it adds one to your score, but right here is where we can add our point sound. Now we're going to need an audio source for this game object, so you can click that, uh, disable play on awake, and that's all the setup we need for that. So right here, we can drag this out, look up, play one shot, and then grab the second one, we can set the volume scale to one, and then we can drag our point into the clip. So now we should have a point sound effect whenever we cross through a pipe. So after playtesting this for a bit, I did find another bug where when the bird gets hit and he falls through a pipe, there's still a chance of it registering a point. So we gotta fix that because the point sound plays, which is very noticeable. So we can use our is alive here as well. Um, we can drag these out, disconnect it, and we're gonna wanna use another branch block soon. But first we need to actually get our is alive block. So we're going to need to create another variable. Our is alive is stored in our bird. So I'm going to create a variable called bird. And we're going to keep it as type null. This is because we need to get our game object. We need to set this variable as a game object on runtime. Just because these pipes spawn in throughout the game. The application doesn't start with them spawned in. These pipes spawn in over the course of the game. So we can actually use this code here. This code is meant to find our score game object, which is our text object that holds our score. That's what this code does. It just finds that game object. We're gonna reuse it so we can actually copy and paste it. Um, we're gonna reuse it, but for our bird. So we can drag the flow there. Um, instead of point, we can click bird, but instead of finding a game object with the name of score, we're gonna find one called bird. And now over here where we disconnected our code before, we can feed this into another branch block. We can feed the true into our custom trigger for increasing our points. So for a parameter, we're actually gonna right click, add unit, and scroll down to variables, object, and we won't get object variable. This is because we want a blank variable because it won't actually register is alive. If we hit the drop down, it only registers bird and point because those are the two variables that are readily available to us. So we're gonna type in is alive manually and you have to make sure that it's spelled exactly like it is on the bird game object or else it won't work. In fact, mine is spelled wrong. It is a lowercase i. And then for the node where it says self, we can drag this out, variables, object, and then get bird. So now it's getting the is alive variable from our bird game object and if that equals true, then add a point. But if it's false, then do not add a point. So now if our bird happens to fall through a point trigger, it won't count the point. So thanks so much for watching this episode in the tutorial series. So we have the sound effects working, but there are a few things in this game that still feel unpolished. Like for example, the background being still blue. We don't have a background image yet, so I think the next video we're going to finish up some things that are missing and then we can learn how to build our game. Please subscribe if you are enjoying the series, like the video because that helps that out as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you later.